it's time for some Takey Bio Review. That's right. My name is Glenn Wokenfeld, Mr. W. I'm an AP Biology teacher. My mission is to help you make biology achievement soar. I do that in two ways. One is through my learn-biology.com website. The other is I have an app called Biomania. And I guess there's a third way. I'm an AP Biology teacher. So between now and the AP Bio exam, I'm going to try and be here every Tuesday night and do some unique kind of review, some musical review. On Come on, sugar, come on, sugar, for the breakdown. We're talking crabs. It's a citric acid cycle, crabs. Try carboxylic acid cycle, crabs. The mitochondrial electron transport chain uses electron energy for pump of protons. I really want to encourage you to ask me questions and to leave me comments and request topics. As you're going through a review and there are things that you're finding difficult to understand, let me know. And if I'm inspired by your questions and your comments, I might even write a new song. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to review cellular respiration. That's part of unit three of the AP Biology curriculum. Cellular respiration is all about making ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That's the molecule that cells use to carry out all of the work that they do to maintain life. So in terms of structure, what you can see here in ATP is there's a ribose sugar, a five carbon sugar that's attached to a nitrogenous base that's attached to three phosphate groups. So this kind of structure is incredibly important because ATP is essentially a nucleotide. Nucleotides are the building blocks of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. This one would be a building block of RNA because it has the ribose sugar. We're going to leave that for another time, but ATP is really one of the central molecules of life. It's really important to understand its structure. And in terms of cellular respiration, that structure is all about energy. So ATP is part of a cycle where it interacts with ADP and phosphate. ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Its counterpart, ADP, is adenosine diphosphate. So basically what happens is that when cells have excess energy or available energy, what they'll do is they'll use that to convert these two molecules on the bottom, ADP and phosphate, an inorganic phosphate group, they'll combine them together, they'll catalyze bond over here, and that'll create ATP. ATP is the high energy form, ADP and phosphate are the low energy forms. And what I mean by that is that when cells convert ATP into ADP and phosphate, that releases a tiny quantity of energy that cells can use to do the work of life, moving, catalyzing, reproducing. And of course, the converse I just talked about, when cells have a small amount of energy that they need to store away, they do that. What they'll do with that is they'll combine ADP and phosphate to make ATP. Later, we'll see that photosynthesis essentially drives the same Thing. In other words, light energy in that context is used to take ADP and phosphate and make it into ATP. Later, that energy can be used to build things like sugars, but that's the subject of another video altogether. Let's talk about this in terms of the things that are happening within cellular respiration. What happens overall is that food gets oxidized. So what that means is that food is a fuel and that fuel loses electrons to provide energy to power another process. In this case, what that process powers is the reduction of a mobile electron carrier called NAD+, which gets reduced to NADH. NAD plus is the low energy form. It's the oxidized form. NADH is the high energy form. Mobile electron carrier means it can move around. It can float around within the liquid of the cell or the liquid of the mitochondria. The cytoplasm in the first case, the mitochondrial matrix in the second case. Now, later what we'll see is that these mobile electron carriers in their reduced form can provide energy to uh, power electron transport, and that is ultimately, in a way that we'll see later, going to power the production of ATP. So food gets oxidized, electron carriers get reduced. What we're seeing here is NAD plus and NADH, but there's another pair as well. There's also FAD, which gets reduced to FADH2. That's the first process. The second process is 
phosphorylation. A big word, but it really just means adding a phosphate to. So what we've seen is that cellular respiration is all about phosphorylating ADP by providing it with an additional phosphate, and that makes it into ATP, right? ADP to ATP, that's phosphorylation. Well, that phosphorylation can happen in two ways. One is a substrate level phosphorylation. And what you see here in number one is that's an enzyme, and that enzyme is attaching a phosphate to ADP, making it into ATP. So that's substrate level phosphorylation. Why? Because an enzyme is using ADP as the substrate of a reaction, making it into ATP. That's type one. The other type is called oxidative phosphorylation. That's what happens in the electron transport chain. It requires oxygen, hence oxidative. It's happening along the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So two processes, oxidation reduction, phosphorylation. Anything else to say about this? No, I think we're good. So let's go on. And uh, let's note that the substrate level phosphorylations, they happen in two of the four phases of cellular respiration. They'll happen in glycolysis, they'll happen in the Krebs cycle. Now, talking about the four stages, let's talk about what they are. First of all, we have glycolysis. And glycolysis is the initial stage. It happens in the cytoplasm. That's what this region out here is over here. And it takes glucose, creates some NADH, one of those mobile electron carriers, creates ATP. The end product is pyruvate, also known as pyruvic acid. It's an organic molecule. It has a lot of chemical energy left. We're gonna bring it into the mitochondria through what's called the link reaction. And that's what happens here at number two. This uh, orange arc over here represents the mitochondrial membrane. So we have the link reaction, pyruvate's coming in. It's uh, becoming a model molecule that's called acetyl-CoA, a two carbon molecule, has still a lot of energy. That is gonna serve as the fuel for the Krebs cycle. That's what these two circles in here indicate. And the Krebs cycle completely oxidizes the remainder of our food and uses that to create lots of mobile electron carriers, NADH, FADH2. And it also uses the chemical energy in the um, food molecule or what was the food molecule to phosphorylate ADP into ATP. So that's all coming out of the Krebs cycle. Now you'll notice that at this point we've made relatively little ATP. We've made some in glycolysis over here. We've made some in the Krebs cycle over here. But what we have made is a lot of electron carriers, mobile electron carriers, NADH over here, over here, over here, FADH2 over here. In the last phase of cellular respiration, which is the electron transport chain, the energy from those mobile electron carriers is used to create ATP from ADP and phosphate. That takes a lot of energy. That energy is supplied by these electron carriers where it's ultimately had their energy provided to them from food and that ultimately came from the sunlight if you take that far back enough. So those are the four stages of cellular respiration. Now let's localize these processes. Let's figure out where they happen in the cell. So glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. So here's the chemical formula of glucose C6H12O6. You see it diffusing through the membrane of the cell. And in here, in the cytoplasm, is where glycolysis is gonna happen. As a result of glycolysis, glucose gets rendered into pyruvic acid. It's a three carbon molecule that still has tons of energy. That'll enter into the mitochondrion over here um, through the link reaction. That'll go to the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle occurs in region five over here. That's the mitochondrial matrix. And then the electron transport chain happens through a series of reactions that are located along the inner membrane of the mitochondrion that's here at number six, but the process won't work unless it's located within a system where there's a inner area, like the matrix over here, and then an outer area, which is what this space says at number seven, that's called the intermembrane space. Now, before I go on any further, what I wanna do is show you something else. At my website, learn-biology.com, you can go to the AP Biology curriculum and you can scroll down to where it says uh, cellular energetics and you can go to cellular respiration. 
And if you go there, you can do an overview tutorial. And that overview tutorial will teach you all about ATP. It'll go over this diagram, which is where the various parts of cellular respiration occur. It'll take you through substrate phosphorylation. It'll take you through oxidation reduction. And you'll really understand the stuff that you've learned here. I can't emphasize how strongly I want to encourage you to go to my website so you can really learn this stuff and set yourself up for a four or a five on this year's AP Bio exam. Okay, so I have a song, a glycolysis rap, that you might have heard. I have karaoke versions of a lot of these songs. So um, what I want to encourage you to do is find these songs on YouTube. I'll put links below. And singing these songs is a great way to learn the material. You don't need to know all the details in preparation for the AP exam. The AP exam is more of a big picture kind of thing, but uh, this introduction will get you into that big picture. So let's start. Hey, sugar. Come on over here, sweetie. Let's break it down. Glycolysis is a series of reactions, enzymatic actions, energy transactions. Takes glucose and molecules of sugary, breaks it down for NADH and ATP. It's an anaerobic cytoplasmic pathway that amazes. Organized easily into three phases, investment, cleavage, and energy harvest. Tell me later which one you like best. Investment, activation, energy supplied. Cleavage, our six carbon sugar divides. Harvest, we get our energy yield. So beautiful, so intricate, keep your eyes peeled. Glycolysis, come on sugar, come on sugar for the breakdown, for the breakdown. Investments like striking a match, that energy you put in makes the fire. All right, let's go over these three phases. So glycolysis starts with an investment phase. What do I mean by that? Well, you got to put a little energy in to get more energy out. Um, what I just sang was investments like striking a match. You're investing some energy in starting the reaction, and that's going to release some energy. So you see that in phase one over here. That's our investment phase. And basically, ATPs are invested. They kind of charge up glucose. It gets converted to another form by other enzymes. So at this point, it's not glucose anymore. It's an isomer. It's fructose. 1,6-bisphosphate, that is not important. But what you need to know is that the cell invests some energy into glucose, getting it ready for the next phase. And the next phase is the cleavage part. Cleavage, think of like a cleaver, cutting something apart. And essentially what happens is that this six carbon doubly phosphorylated molecule, that just means it has two phosphates attached, is broken apart into two three carbon molecules, each with a phosphate. Is it actually that simple? No, it's a little bit more complex, but you don't need to worry about that. By the way, note that every arrow here is representing an enzyme catalyzed reaction. Enzymes are doing everything in cellular respiration. Now what happens is that this molecule over here, it's G3P, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, is now going to be oxidized. And that oxidation is going to be coupled to the reduction of NADP, NAD plus to make it into NADH. That's what's happening at letter G over here. And then other enzymes are going to use the chemical energy in G3P in order to phosphorylate, add a phosphate to ADP, making it into ATP. And so that's the harvest phase. So a little bit of energy goes in, a lot more energy comes out. So um, here are the key points to remember. Glucose is getting oxidized. It's our fuel. And that's what we do with fuels. We oxidize them. NAD plus gets reduced to NADH. And the net yield is two ATPs and two NADH. And what you wind up with over here are two pyruvates, also known as pyruvic acid. That exits the cycle. So that's glycolysis, the first phase of cellular respiration. Important to remember that no oxygen is required for this reaction to work. There's a lot of detail. I'm hoping that this video is going to be useful, but what I also want to encourage you to do is go to my website, learn-biology.com. Don't forget the dash and subscribe. Um, actually go to learn-biology.com slash subscribe and you can subscribe to my website and it's a terrific resource for you. It has a complete uh, series of AP Bio reviews. 
It's got a full AP Bio curriculum, tutorials about every topic in AP Biology. If as you review, you find there are topics that you have weaknesses in, well, go ahead and strengthen those areas by using my interactive tutorials, which use quizzes, flashcards, interactive diagrams to really help you learn the material. You won't believe the learning that you'll do. Um, and by the way, if you're part of a class, you know, that's already using it, there are hundreds of teachers around the country and around the world who are using it, you know, just, just do it more. Um, but if you're not part of a class, you can get your own subscription for $29.95 and you can join those 10,000 students who are actually using uh, learn-biology.com right now. Okay, let's go on, more cellular respiration. After glycolysis, what happens is the link reaction. What is it linking? It's linking glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. So it's this that happens over here in this diagram. So let's talk about what's going on. First of all, again, remember here, cytoplasm is where glycolysis is happening. We're moving into the matrix of the mitochondria. You know, again, the mitochondria is essentially a bacterial cell. So the matrix is that cell's cytoplasm, right? But it has its own name. It's called the matrix. And we're linking events in the cytoplasm to events in the matrix. Pyruvic acid goes in, it's that three carbon product that results from glycolysis. As it goes in, there's an enzyme that snips off a carbon dioxide. It's a carboxyl group over there, not important to know, but you can see COO, CO2, that carbon dioxide comes out. That's one third of the carbon dioxide that you exhale. Well, the remaining stuff, not the carbon dioxide, but the remaining uh, stuff over here, that gets oxidized. And that oxidation is coupled to the reduction of NAD plus to NADH. And again, reduction, we're giving things chemical energy when we reduce them, we're taking away chemical energy when we oxidize them. And the result is the formation of a molecule called acetyl-CoA. Um, there's an acetyl group attached to what's called a coenzyme, and this essentially acts as a shuttle to carry a lot of chemical energy into the Krebs cycle. So um, that leads us into the Krebs cycle. So we've now covered the link reaction and glycolysis, now we're moving into Krebs. Krebs is a complex series of reactions, but what do you need to know? We're gonna stay on a very, very big picture level here. In the Krebs cycle, we completely oxidize acetyl-CoA. Now, if you look on this end of the acetyl-CoA, that's essentially a methane, right? Methane is natural gas. We use that to cook. We use that to uh, drive turbines that make electricity. There's a lot of energy there. And the cell can, again, use that energy to create electron carriers so it can make what? ATP. Um, and here are the products of the Krebs cycle. ATP, FADH2, another electron carrier, and NADH. And um, more CO2 is released, the other two-thirds of the CO2. And in fact, you see a CO2 coming off over here, another CO2 coming over here. That's two-thirds of the CO2 that aerobically respiring organisms like you and me and lizards and sea anemones are releasing. So, um, I also have a song about the Krebs cycle. I'm gonna sing a bit of this for you, and let's go ahead and do that right now. In the matrix of the mitochondria of all our cells is a cycle of reactions that one hands Krebs a Nobel Prize. The cycle takes the energy and food and makes it into other forms your cells can use. Krebs cycle makes electron carrier NADH, which later brings electrons to the electron transport chain. And Krebs makes FADH do its function is the same. Krebs also makes some ATP, another claim to fame with talking Krebs. It's a citric acid cycle, Krebs. Try carboxylic acid cycle, Krebs. Each cycle makes one ATP, three NADH, one FADH2. Right before the cycles are transitional. Let's talk about what's important in all these reactions. So. The main thing is that what the Krebs cycle is doing is it's completely oxidizing acetyl-CoA, right? So it's taking essentially this methane over here and getting every last bit of chemical energy out of it. Um, as it does that, it's using that chemical, chemical energy to create ATP, FADH2, 
another electron carrier, and NADH. Um, and it's probably not a bad idea to know the numbers. For every acetyl-CoA that comes in, we're making one ATP. Um, there's an intermediate molecule that's made first, but you don't really need to worry about that. We're making three NADH, and we're making one FADH2. And then also keep in mind that because we make two pyruvic acids at the end of glycolysis, this thing is running twice for each glucose. Um, and it's a cycle. So what, sh what you should know, uh, this four carbon molecule, oxaloacetate, that's what combines with acetyl-CoA to make a six carbon molecule called citric acid. And then in the subsequent reactions, citric acid is just oxidized, oxidized, oxidized. Its chemical energy is used to power phosphorylation of ADP and phosphate into ATP over here. And then at the end, we have oxaloacetate again. So um, I've uh, got a cool ending to this song. We've harvested what energy came in at Krebs to start. Now we have oxaloacetate at the spinal part. Oxaloacetate is the commencement and finale. Ready to meet acetyl-CoA and here at the final tally. Krebs goes round and round, such an ancient cycle. Spinning like the wheels of my bicycle. Krebs is like the axle of aerobic respiration. I breathe out of CO2 with every exhalation. So now let's review. Input is acetyl-CoA with carbon 2. The carbons get removed, releasing CO2. Exhaling sends the CO2 out of you. The cycle's functions energy transformation. 3 NADH1 FADH2 creation and also synthesis of 1 ATP, which cells directly utilize for energy. For every glucose cells absorbed, the cycle runs two times. As long as cells get fuel, Krebs is running just fine. It precedes electron transport chain. It follows glycolysis. It's been around and around in the mitochondrial matrix. Krebs. How are you going to learn this? I got another way. I've got an app that's called Biomania. It has multiple choice questions. It's got flashcards. It's got FRQs. You can download it from Google Play. You can download it from the App Store. It is uh, $6.99, and uh, it's the practice you need to get a four or a five. So get Biomania. Get your subscription to learn-biology.com. There it is. Okay, we're close to the end. We've done glycolysis. We've done the link reaction. We've done the Krebs. TCA cycle. Now we're ready for the electron transport chain, which, you know, we're rushing through this because it's AP Bio Review, but man, this stuff is so incredibly cool. So here's the mitochondrial electron transport chain. It's occurring over here in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, but it wouldn't happen unless there was also a mitochondrial matrix. And this area over here, which is called the intermembrane space. So Here's a super close-up view of what's happening. What we have is the dropping off of NADHs and FADH2's energized electron, which then flow along an electron transport chain, an electron pathway. It's like a little wire, an electrical wire, an organic electrical wire that's built into the inner mitochondrial membrane. And what this wire does is it powers a nano device. And what are these nano devices? These are proton pumps. And what they do is they pump protons from the matrix to the intermembrane space. And that, as we'll see, is what powers the creation of ATP. Um, let's see if there's more that I want to say about that right here. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to tell you the next part of the story. So here we have the electron transport chain. The electrons are supplied by like by NADH and FADH2. I was saying like because you can think of those as batteries. Batteries that are dropping off electrical energy. That electrical energy creates an electrical current. That electrical current powers the pumping of protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space. Why do you need to power it? Because it's an active transport process. Protons are in low concentration here. They're in high concentration here. Moving against a gradient requires active transport. All these protons accumulate here in the intermembrane space, and there's only one place they can get out because they can't get out through the inner membrane nor the outer membrane. Those are both phospholipid barriers, and there's no way that a proton, a charged particle, is going to make it through a phospholipid barrier. But it can make it through 
this channel over here, which is called ATP synthase. And its name tells you what it does. It makes, synthesizes ATP, powered by the kinetic energy of protons that move through. So it's a channel and an enzyme that's involved in ATP synthesis. I am gonna sing you the chorus of my electron transport chain song because it captures really the, the heart of what you need to know about this process. The mitochondrial electron transport chain uses electron energy for pumping protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space, increasing proton concentration in that place. The only way the protons can escape is through a channel and an enzyme ATP synthase, which uses diffused protons kinetic energy to make ATP from ATP and P. You can listen to the entire song on YouTube. You can learn to sing the karaoke version. Let's talk about what actually happens in ATP synthesis. All these protons have gotten pumped to the intermembrane space over here. They're in high concentration here, low concentration here. There's uh, an intense gradient that's formed, and, that's gradient, and that gradient is just a concentration gradient. Lots of protons here, none over here, but Remember, like charges repel. So all these protons want to get away from one another. And then on top of that, opposite charges attract. The inner side of the, of, of the matrix, the matrix is much more negatively charged than the very positively charged intermembrane space. So there's essentially electrical attraction, electrochemical attraction that's pulling protons from the intermembrane space to the matrix, but the only way that they can get through is through ATP synthase. Here you can see a, a sort of a cartoon that shows the structure of ATP and synthase. It allows protons to come through, and as those protons come through, it essentially turns a little rotor. That rotor has binding sites for ADP and phosphate, and imagine that every time the rotor gets turned, it smashes the ADP and the phosphate together creating ATP. It takes energy to do that. Where does that energy come from? It comes from diffusing protons. How do we get the protons concentrated there? By flowing electrons. How did we get flowing electrons? By oxidizing food so that we can take that energy in food and make it into NADH and FADH2. Where'd the food come from? Well, you ate the food. Where'd that come from? You know, it came from plants, and ultimately it came from sunlight, and that's driving the whole system. So that is it. Um, I think that what I'd like to do to end is I want to sing you the last part of my electron trans transport chain song just to end this whole process. Think of all those trapped protons, each one's positive. The matrix in comparison is negative. Opposites attract, so the protons are dying to get to the matrix. Oh, how they're trying. There's only one channel that lets protons pass, and they use it like high school students busting out a class. It's a channel and an enzyme. It's ATP synthase, the closer in this game, an energy ace. ATP synthase is embedded in the inner membrane. How it works is so cool, it's insane. It's got channels for diffusing protons running right through it. When cells make ATP, well, watch how they do it. The matrix side of ATP synthase has binding sites for ADP and P, which come in and bind. And as ATP synthase lets protons barge through, their kinetic energy gets put to use. Like water through a turbine, proton movement generates rotation, change in synthesis, bind in sight, conformation, which catalyzes chemical bond formation. ADP and P make ATP that energy sensation. We've finished. We're at the end. There, of course, is more. Make a request. Ask me to do in a, you know anaerobic respiration, and I can do that. But we've covered glycolysis. We've covered the link reaction. We've covered the Krebs cycle, and we've covered the electron transport chain so much, and we've done it with some music, and I hope you've had a good time doing some review. You've got two paths to get to that four or five that you're going for. This has been such a tough year, and the AP exam is a tough exam. So I want you to have every advantage that you can muster, and the advantages that I can offer to you are the Biomania AP Bio app and my website, learn-biology.com. Go to learn-biology.com, subscribe, download the Biomania app, um, and then you'll make an in-app purchase to unlock all the content. Um, I'm gonna try and do this every Tuesday. Um, again, please ask me questions, leave me comments. I really wanna be here for you. If it's not useful to you, it's not useful. So um, 
request new topics. I might even write new songs. And all I can say is thank you very much. I really appreciate if you got here to the end, that shows that you are super committed to learning B-I-O-L-O-G-Y. I'll see you next week. Take it easy. The mitochondrial electron transport chain uses electron energy for pump of protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space, increasing protein concentration in that place. The only way the protons can escape is through a channel and an enzyme ATP synthase, which uses diffusing protons kinetic energy to make ATP from ATP and P.